Hey guys, it, it is really good to be together. I know it may seem like physically we're a fair way away, but we are really together and, and it's a privilege to be able to be continuing to, to experience church as a family. Um, these days are challenging days. They're interesting days. They're days where we need to really consider what it means to be the church. And one of the things I've been reflecting on this week is the whole concept of the first church, that first century church in Acts chapter 2, where we read that people gathered together in homes and worshipped and opened the word and understood the truth and, and shared and prayed together. And so really, in some ways, we're going back to being that early church again. That's the perspective, that's the, the idea, and, and I love the fact that we're gathering together in homes. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing right now, thanks for joining with us, experiencing church together with us. You know, many are describing the effects of the um, COVID-19 pandemic as a crisis. Uh, many of us are experiencing changes and hardships and challenges that are really new to us, things for the first time, experiences for the first time, things that we've never experienced before. And these, these moments, we can find ourselves feeling life's not fair, feeling like we're scared. And that becomes a bit of a narrative for many of us. Many of us have lived through tough times, difficult circumstances, hardships in our lives. And during, during those times, we really quickly discover how real our relationship with Jesus is. We find out whether he's the first person we go to or whether we allow other things like fear and concern to get in the way. Our response to these trials really does help us to reveal what's really happening on the inside, the depth of our relationship with Jesus. In tough times, we have a choice. We can trust our situation to God, or we can deal in our own strength. We can, we can lean towards fear, or we can embrace faith. We can allow ourselves to move to a place of panic, or we can really draw close to God in prayer. As we go through different life experiences, I believe that God shapes us for life. I believe that God uses some of those difficult experiences for us to, to really lean into him and to get to know him more, but also to understand ourselves and our future and the way he wants us to live our lives. Today, we're going to look at the way that God shaped a particular person in the scriptures whose life continually turned upside down by the circumstances that sometimes seemed out of control in his life. We're going to look at this person and see what can we glean from him as we live through some challenging times in this day and age. Yet through life experiences, God moves in this guy in a really powerful way. And then we're going to look at our own lives and we're going to reflect on how God might use our life experiences to mold and to form and to fashion our future. So let's just pray and then we're going to dive in to the Old Testament and look at a man by the name of Joseph. Let's just pray. Father, as we open up your word now, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would reveal to us some truths about the way you want us to live our lives in this moment right now. So wherever we are, Father God, we're here with you and we're here together in community, experiencing community. So would you just speak to us through your word? I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So yeah, we're going to dive into the scriptures and we're going to look at the life of Joseph. Now we're going to look at the Old Testament Joseph. So this is not the guy who was um, Jesus' earthly dad. This is the Joseph of the Old Testament. So if you've got your Bibles with you, or your iPhones, or your iPads, or whatever it is that you look at the Scriptures in, which should open up to the first book of the Bible. Pretty easy to find. Genesis. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 37. And I'm going to read from verse 18. Verse 18. So let me just give you some background on Joseph. So Joseph was 17, and he was a shepherd, and he was the favorite son of Jacob. You remember the coat of many colours? We heard a lot about the coat of many colours that Jacob, his father, made for him and gave him because he was special. Joseph was living the dream. Dad's favourite son had it all laid out for him, walked around in this beautiful coat. But something was brewing behind the scenes. You see, his brothers, Joseph's brothers, weren't liking the attention that Joseph was getting. They didn't like the favouritism. And Joseph became overconfident and clueless about this growing hatred that was going on. And he starts to share dreams that God had given him about his future supremacy, and particularly the fact that his brothers, brothers would be bowing down to him. How do you think that went over with the brothers? Probably not all that well. Well, let's have a look. 
Genesis chapter 37 and verse 18. When Joseph's brothers saw Joseph coming, they recognized him at a distance. And as he approached, they made plans to kill him. They weren't happy. Here he comes, the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben, one of the other sons, heard of their scheme, he, be- he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him into this empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. And the story goes on. These brothers' hatred intensified towards Joseph. They wanted to kill him. And they threw him into a death pit. And the scriptures go on and tell us about one brother who says, no, let's not kill him. And he convinces the others to sell their brother into slavery. And so a caravan came past, heading towards Egypt, and they sell their brother to slavery. And the Bible says something really interesting at this stage. The Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. In the middle of coming out of being the favorite son to being sold to slavery, the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph was no longer living the dream. He was probably thinking life sucked at that moment. But the Lord was with him. Let's pick the pace up of the story a little bit. In a moment, Joseph's life had been changed from being a loved son to being a slave in an unknown land in Egypt. He was sold to Pharaoh's captain Potiphar as a servant. But the Lord was with Joseph. In Genesis 39, and I'd encourage you to read over the next, there's so much to read, I can't read it all right now, but I'd encourage you over this next week to read from Genesis chapter 37 right through to even Genesis chapter 50, and you'll read and about the story of Joseph and the way that God moves. But in Genesis 39, things start to shape up and get better for Joseph. So he's a slave and he's, he's working for Potiphar, and he works hard for Potiphar. And Potiphar puts him in charge of his house affairs, and he does this really well. Pretty cool, hey? He's a, he's a slave and now he's been put in charge and he's been given some responsibility. But this is short-lived too. Things turn around because you see Potiphar's wife decides that she likes the look of Joseph. And she, so she makes advances towards Joseph. But Joseph is known as an honourable man and he rejects the advances of Potiphar's wife. He, he wouldn't sleep with her. So Potiphar's wife falsely accuses him. Potiphar hears about it. And sends Joseph to jail. Sends him to prison. A man of impeccable integrity is jailed. And then guess what the scriptures say? But the Lord was with Joseph. In the middle of being thrown into the dungeon, thrown into jail, God is still with him. These crazy ups and downs that this guy, Joseph, this young man, Joseph, is having, the highs and lows, the mountaintop periods of this is amazing responsibility to these moments of, of gutter where he, he's thrown in jail with nothing. But while he's in jail, the Bible says that Joseph finds favour with the guards in prison. The Lord was with Joseph. It reminds me a bit of the letter that, um, that J- Jesus' brother James writes in James chapter 1 and verse 2 to 4. He writes this, he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing or not lacking anything. Crazy. Crazy that, that, that James is saying it's okay when you're going through tough times because God's at work. And Joseph, Joseph's life is starting to show that, that in these tough times, God is at work in his life. Let's keep going with the story. Two years later, A servant of Pharaoh, so he's been in jail for two years, but a servant of Pharaoh remembers Joseph's ability. He's got this divine ability to interpret dreams. So two years being in jail, Pharaoh, who's deeply troubled by a dream that no one can figure out what it means, brings Joseph from jail. He's got to get out a free um, um, card, get out a jail free card. And he finds himself standing before Pharaoh, the most powerful man on the planet at the time. And he interprets his dream. Why? Because the Lord was with Joseph. See, God never left him. Pharaoh then rewards Joseph overseeing the lands of Egypt. And it goes on. 
And, and in the end, after so many years of struggle and strife and suffering, God makes Joseph the second most influential person known in the world. From, from a well, from a cistern, to a slave, to jail. And this man of integrity, this man who God never left, is now the second most powerful man, most influential man in the world at the time. What an incredible turnaround. Who would have thought? The plot thickens. Because at the end of this whole story, because the famine is so bad in that country at that time, his brothers, remember the brothers who sold him into slavery, they come from Israel to Egypt. How does it end? What does he do? You remember how much they mistreated him. They were going to kill him. And they sold him to slavery. And this is what he does. He forgives them. And he persuades them to settle in Egypt with their father Jacob. I love how this story comes full circle. Let's look at it. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 19. But Joseph replies to the brothers, Don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. Let me say that again. You intended it to harm me, brothers, but God, God never left me. And he used it. He intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you, brothers, and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. Many people assume that in tough times, God leaves them. I know for me, there are times when things get really tough and I think, God, where are you? And my first prayer was, God, where are you in this moment? You seem so far away. Have you left me? And often I, I think about the fact of, give me the heart of Joseph that recognizes that God is with him through every moment, not just the mountaintop periods, not just the, the times of success, not the times of celebration, but in those tough times as well. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. He's an ever-present help in trouble. See, God promises he will never leave us nor forsake us, no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance. He is with us always and forever. It's really inspiring that through all the trials and all the challenges that Joseph faced, he showed faith, he showed integrity, he showed honesty, he showed a solid work ethic and a confidence in his God, that he was faithful to his God, even when it looked like and it felt like God wasn't being faithful to him. And I wonder in this season, not, not just because of the pandemic, but in this season, whatever's going on in your worlds, whether you might use Joseph as a model, understanding just like Jesus God said to, to, um, to Joseph, I'm always with you. I'll never leave you. Jesus is saying to us, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. In moments of chaos, where's your trust? For many of us that are, that are engaged in, in what we're talking about right now, many of us would say, we're Christians. My trust is in God. Some of us might be just checking out the whole faith and you might be just checking out our time online and we just welcome you. This is great and we want you to continue to check in with us. Wherever you're at on your journey, I don't want you to come up with the easy answer of, well, God's always with me. Do you recognize that? Do you live that out? Do you live the way that Joseph is? Do you want to live the way that Joseph does? In John chapter 16 and verse 33, Jesus told us there'd be difficult times. So we shouldn't be surprised when tough things happen. Jesus promises that. He actually says to us, I've told you these things so that, you, that in me you have my, may have peace. In this world, you not may, not could, you will have trouble. There will be trouble. That's part of life is the mountaintop periods and the valley times. But take heart, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Remember Moses talking to Joshua in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8. He says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. As we unpack the shape that we have and the way that God's wired us with a shape, he shapes up with us with life experiences. And some of those life experiences are challenging. Some of them are difficult. Some of them are, are hurtful. Can I say to you right now, God doesn't waste a hurt. He will never waste a hurt. I believe he uses every moment for his glory if we allow him to. But many of us are stuck looking at the, what's, what's God not doing 
narrative rather than trusting God despite the circumstances. So whatever tough thing you might be going through now, you may have been through in the past or may come up in the future, I think Joseph's encouragement to us is let's look to Jesus. Let's look to God. Let's put our our faith and our trust in him. Let's bring together what we've just talked about and look at really quickly five statements, five lessons that we can learn from Joseph's life. One, one lesson. God's plans and purposes are far greater than our own. God's in control. Let me say it again. God's plans and purposes are far greater than our own. God is in control. The second lesson, suffering is not always a bad thing. Murray, that doesn't make sense. How can suffering be a good thing? It can be a good thing if God uses it and turns it for his glory. And many of us who are listening right now would know that in that moment of suffering, it's really tough. But many of us can look back on moments. We can look back at our life experiences and go, but you know what? God used that in an incredible way in my life or in the lives of others. So you see, the big picture of suffering is not always bad. God can use the most painful times in our life for his glory. If we let him. Thirdly, God honors and blesses patience and perseverance. Think about Joseph's life. He was patient and he persevered. Fourthly, like Joseph, we need to live with integrity and honesty, serving others with a strong work ethic. We need to shine God's light in dark places. Many would say that what's happening in the world today is a darkness. They would say the pandemic's a darkness. What a brilliant opportunity for Christians to shine the light and the love of Jesus. For you, the way you respond and the way you react to shine the light of Jesus in this moment. And the fifth lesson I think we can learn from Joseph's life is we need to trust God. Despite our circumstances, despite what we think, despite how we feel, we need to allow faith to overcome fear. One of my favorite verses in Proverbs, and maybe yours as well, is Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and 6. It says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. That's what Joseph did. He trusted in his God, and no matter what the circumstance was, God created a pathway for him. I wonder if we'd be the people that we are today if we removed all the difficult and challenging experiences. Would you be the person you are today if you didn't have to go through some of the tough things that you've been through? This is another challenge for us. I wonder what we're going to be like the other side of this pandemic. I know for Kaz and I, both individually and as a couple, It's the tough experiences, it's the challenging times that we've had to work through together that have really strengthened our relationship, that's brought us closer together and it's made us more reliant on our God. I'll say it again, God never wastes a hurt. So I wonder, what have been the life experiences where you've learnt the most? What have been the life experiences where you've learnt the most? When have been the most memorable moments where God has grown you the most? Maybe there are two questions that you could ask um, as you're you're sort of reflecting as we close up our time together. Maybe you could ask that of yourself. If you're with other people, you might be able to ask that for one another. Let me ask them again. What have been the life experiences where you have learnt the most? And when have been the moments where you have grown the most? You see, like Joseph, let's embrace this time, this season of trial, with our hearts ready to follow and to embrace God and Jesus and all he has for us. Why? Because the Lord is with us. Let's pray. Our loving God, we thank you that your promise to Joseph is your promise to us, that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us, you're with us always. We thank you that you're a God who is with us, God with us, Emmanuel. And I pray for every single person who can hear my voice right now. God, would you reach out into the hearts of people right now and build a a strength and build a godly confidence and build a faith in us that would shine into this world, that we might be a people that shine your light into this darkness, that we might be a people that don't look at the circumstances, but look at the God who is with us and in the knowledge and the faith that you have a path and you have a way forward. We trust you, Jesus, and we walk with you. In Jesus' name.
Amen.